You is good. It's your boy Ty back here with another video. And in this video today, guys, we're going to be going over and ranking our top 10 power forwards right now in NBA 2K23, my team. Now, it's interesting because at the power forward position alone, not counting Von Carroll, because I'd count him as a uh, small forward primary, we've got five end games. So, it's kind of tough outside of those five end games to come up with the others. So hopefully you guys like and respect my list. Again, it is really tough. If you want, you know, where Invincible Webby would be ranked on this list, obviously number one. I didn't put him on this list um, just because he's on the small forward list. I feel like that was enough uh, for him. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Some honorable mentions. Ben Wallace is an honorable mention. Anderson Barajow is an honorable mention couple of guys that didn't quite make the cut but are very close even a guy like Mobley didn't make the list a guy like Barnyarni didn't make the list doesn't mean they're bad I think it just goes to show how good of an overall list this truly is let's start it off at number 10 with endgame Bill Russell now I think this is a good indication of why a guy like Barnyarni didn't make the list why you know some of the other guys don't make the list because you can run Bill Russell at your power forward position and be just fine. It's not like Bill Russell can't play at the highest level. The only thing is he's just undersized. So if you run Bill Russell, you might want to run like a uh, big Z at the three, somebody like that. Even a Wemby type card uh, can get the job done. But there's no question that uh, Bill Russell is definitely undersized. His release is incredible. He moves well. I mean, he does a lot of other things on the court pretty well. It is just the fact that he is that little bit undersized. I do like the way he moves. I like the way, uh, you know, he, he his release feels. I like everything about Re Bill Russell outside of his height. If this card was small forward uh, eligible, he would be absolutely him in my team. Bill Russell, really, really solid, just undersized, coming in at number 10. At number 9, although I tweeted it yesterday that Anderson Verjao is better than Tim Duncan, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Now, why can I not do it? Look, Anderson Verjao is absolutely elite. But if he came into like a competitive type game, I would play Tim Duncan. I just would. And here's why. He's got the same release. He's not going to move as well as a guy like a Bill Russell. Just because he does weigh a little bit more and has that kind of wider player model player build. But it's just fine. I mean, he's going to get you a, get you a guy with a great release. He's going to play incredibly good defense. And that's really what Tim Duncan is. He's, a, he's an inch taller than Bill Russell, so he's going to be able to compete against the Giants a little bit better. I don't love Tim Duncan. And honestly, the only way I would hype this card up is if 2K gave us a free option for everybody who did grind the trophy case. Since 2K didn't do that, I'm not going to sit here for much longer and hype up Tim Duncan, who is an overall very mid and mediocre player. At number eight, yes, Pink Diamond Taco Fall. If you're asking me if I was to play in, let's say, uh, you know, a tournament for money, or let's say even on the no money spent, who I'd rather have for the rest of the game, Pink Diamond Taco or Bill Russell or Tim Duncan, I would say Pink Diamond Taco Fall if they were unoctionable. Why? This card is 7 6. And, and I can't phrase it enough. This year, especially, it, it's different than past years. Height absolutely runs the game. There's not anything that runs the game as much as height does this year. And it's kind of honestly sad to see. Like, the fact that I'm choosing a pink diamond that came out in March over an end game that came out yesterday is just kind of crazy to me. But that's just the truth. I mean, that is the absolute truth behind it. I am taking Taco over Bill Russell, over Tim Duncan. Not that I want to. But I do believe it would be the right option for me. I do believe he is the overall better card just because he is 7'6", which just kind of, again, shows how much height truly runs the game. And it is sad in my team. At number seven, level 40 reward, end game Joe LMB. This card is absolutely fantastic. I don't really have any complaints about him outside of his movement is not great, which... How many people are really moving that much with their power forward anyways? Probably not too many, so I really wouldn't worry too much about Joel Embiid's movement in general. I think it's just fine. 280 pounds, though. So, I mean, again, don't expect to just go out there and move like he's Bill Russell because that's not what Joel Embiid's going to do. He's going to compete against the other bigs a little bit better than a Tim Duncan, than a Bill Russell. His release, 
obviously going to be exactly the same. Just don't expect his dribble sigs to take it places. Again, because he is just going to move a little bit slow. If you want gameplays of any of these guys, again, they are all on my YouTube channel. So you can compare and be to a guy, let's say, like Taco Fall, like Bill Russell, and just see who you personally will prefer in my team. Coming in at number six. Next, Victor Wembanyama. Now, Victor Wembanyama didn't have the best, I would say, performance or best debut, but it is just the Summer League. And I will say defensively, he was still an absolute problem. Now, offensively, again, that's a different story. Didn't really show me much offensively, and it just kind of looked pretty rough out there. But no doubt about it, Wemby is going to be a problem for years to come, not only in 2K, but in real life as well. Seven, five, eight foot wingspan, hot spots from, ever, from everywhere. To me, he's very similar to a guy like Taco. Not as tall, not as good of, his, uh, of a player amount of player build. Maybe not even as good of a release. But everything else in the court, Wemby's going to do a little bit better. His animations are good. His player model is absolutely elite. He's going to knock down shots for you as he comes with an 86 three ball with high of fame range extender. Comes with some decent dribbling as well, including quick first step plant breaker. Is this card in Victor Wemby and Yama gonna be, you know, the be all end all? Is he gonna be your best power forward in my team? No. Is he even comparable to the invincible Wemby? Probably not. But for his value at the power forward position, it's hard to get much better than Wemby can provide. At number five, invincible Shaquille O'Neal. There's not many invincibles, if at all, that are going to overall be better than Big Shaq in my team. And I know a lot of people are like, well, duh, Ty, I, Shaq's my man. I've been using Shaq forever. Duh, Ty, I spent the $50 on Shaq. Shaq's absolutely elite. I don't think people respect him enough. Like, Invincible Shaq is really, really, really good in my team. 7-1 can compete against the Giants. Has a really, really, really good release. I know he's got the basic leaner, which is that basic leaner good? No, okay? I know he's got the day move by the back, but he's got MJ dribble style. He's got Manchez Harrow base, John Wall upper on very quick, 7-1, 7-7 seven, seven, seven wingspan. I think Shaq, as an invincible, is absolutely elite in my team. But again, if you spent the $50 on Shaq, he can play for you guys until end game, right? I mean, I said it when Shaq came out that I believe that he could play for the rest of the time. And I mean that. Shaq is that good in my team, especially at that power forward position. Is he as good as the end game, Shaq? We'll talk about that here in a second. At number four, Invincible KP. So I just got done basically saying that I love Invincible Shaq in my team, but that there aren't that many other better power forwards in my team. Invincible KP is one that I do think is better. I mean, a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I do think when you compare KP and Shaq side by side, they're similar. KP is tall. They're not going to do it much else better on the court. But at the end of the day, guys, height runs my team, okay? And so if KP at 7376 wingspan has 99 everything, every badge in the game, basically, every, you know, good tendencies, the problem with KP is his release didn't get updated. And is his release bad? No. Is it good? It's fine. But when you compare it to Shaq's release, it's not even close. Shaq has a way better release than KP. So I really do think it's preference between these two cards in general. I probably prefer KP. That's why he's higher here for me. But I, again, don't think you can do it too wrong. At number three, end game David Robinson. Now, Here's the, here's the problem, okay? Invincible Shaq, still expensive. KP, still expensive. D-Rob, still expensive. All of these cards are still really expensive in my team. And, and, and that is a problem, right? That's a, that's a big problem in my opinion because, look, I don't want to spend a ton of MT on a guy like David Robinson in my team. That's just my personal opinion. I don't want to have to do that. Now, again, D-Rob's player build's good. He's skinny enough that he can move decently as well. He's one of my favorite power forwards in my team, and I do like the lefty uh, KPJ as well. I really do like that. From top to bottom, I think D-Rob is deserving of this number three spot. And if you want to put him at number two, that's fine. My number two, though, is endgame Shaquille O'Neal, who I do believe is better than his invincible. Now, as far as his base release, the Montrez Harrow base on very quick compared to the KPJ on very quick. Big difference is the uppers. This Shaq is going to have a way quicker release. But the reason I like him more is because of the Trey Leaner and updated Dribble Six. That's why I like Shaq more. If you prefer the Invincible Shaq, or let's just say you want to run the Invincible Shaq, 
do what you guys have to do, okay? I'm not trying to, uh, to, to, to sit up here and tell you guys, oh, you got to, you know, adjust your entire lineup just because I told you the end game Shaq is it better than Invincible Shaq. No, use the cards you have fun with. I'm just saying, I think end game Shaq, in my personal opinion, is that little bit better. Coming in at number one, my best overall power forward in my team, and probably still to this day, if I had to rank cards, probably a top two card in my team, Manu Bull Dark Matter. A top two card in my team, he's 7'7", seven, seven, wingspan. His stats are nearly perfect when you add a shoot to him. Badges are nearly perfect. Release chicken. I mean, it's not the quickest release, but it is absolutely chicken in my team. Jarrett Allen is tough to beat. There's not many cards that are going to be better than Jarrett Allen is in my team. Jarrett Allen base very quick. Normal leaner does come with decent triple six as well. My overall best power forward in my team. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Who did I miss out on? Who was I too high or too low on? If you're a big Barnyarni Evan Mobley fan, I do apologize again. Just remember, Bill Russell was at my number 10, so it's hard to really get the list down that low. Let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comments, though, guys. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, man, I love you guys. Never have a blessed day.